Justin Harris with EliteFTS.com talking to Ben Hartman. Uh, I have some questions on some of the trendy fad type diets that are going on, like the intermittent fasting, the paleo diet, the if it meets your macros. What's, what's your opinion on those right now? You know, anytime you have uh, a loud enough voice, people are going to listen, whether or not that voice is, is preaching the right information. And I think that's a lot of times what happens with the fad diets that, that have come and gone. Um, they all have a, a foundation in at least some credible science. That's kind of how usually they start. And then you have the pseudoscience aspect where it sounds convincing. Mm -hmm. and, and you have somebody that knows this much information preaching to all these people mm -hmm. where this person knows that they're full of shit, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, like, that's what you, you said right at the start, the, the speak loud enough. Speak loud and that's enough. that's what happens is, is you have these two people and the, these two people might know what's actually going on. But nobody person, else knows who knows what. And what they, what they end up believing is the person is willing to yell the yeah. loudest and yell the longest. The, the longest posts on the message boards yeah. using caps, you know, yeah, all caps. All caps. Um, regarding some of those, you know, things like the paleo has really, especially in recent light, has been debunked as being what the caveman ate. And I, well, find, it, I find it interesting that people, you know, they, they reference paleo, but there's other periods of time. What about the Neolithic man? Yeah. What about all these other things? People don't reference or that. Also, and, we, and, and, well, and, and to, be, to be fair, we don't, there is no essential carbohydrate. We can go our entire lives mm -hmm. without eating carbohydrates. We aren't truly designed to eat carbohydrates. And in and paleo times, we maybe we didn't. But the other thing to keep in mind is that the average lifespan was 25 years. Yeah. So, you know. The, yeah, they, don't, they don't have metabolic disease. They yeah. didn't live long enough to have metabolic disease. They died from an illness or an animal attack or, you know, any number of, of mm -hmm. natural uh, disasters. But when you're looking at paleo, it, the basic tenets of unrefined foods, quality proteins, essential fats, high fiber, you know, fruits and vegetables, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Well, so if you're going to, to the, pick that yeah. over you know, the grapefruit diet or eating McDonald's all day, obviously that's going to be better. I think mm -hmm. it's misnamed. I think the application of it um, for the general population is probably pretty good. I think in the athletic population, they really um, steer away from potentially viable fuel sources, things like rice mm -hmm. uh, or, or, you know, we've talked about the, the cyclic dextrins, the peri yeah. workouts, all the starches around training. If you're negating entire food sources or mm -hmm. food groups or dairy or legumes or all these things, as long as you have the ability to process and assimilate those nutrients, that's not going to be a bad thing. And well, one that's thing like people, just because there's no, there's no essential carbohydrate, that means... Doesn't mean they're not effective, optimal or yeah, effective. There you go. For, yeah. And they are, I mean, we are, our bodies aren't, maybe are designed where we can survive without carbohydrates, but we're also designed that probably the optimal fuel source mm -hmm. is carbohydrates. Well, I mean, you know, we live in a, in a environment that is strength, you know, strength and performance athletes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, carbohydrates are going to be the, you know, preferential fuel source. Uh, one thing I think people forget about is what the paleolithic man or the you know the, the ancient man used to eat is not what we have available to us today so people think i'm going to go eat you know grass-fed you know beef and i'm going to get vegetables from the grocery store and organic this and most of what we know as produce now most of our fruits and vegetables didn't even exist a few hundred years mm -hmm. ago um, whether it be genetic modification or crossbreeding which is another form of you know genetic modification um, you know even something as simple as corn what we know is corn didn't look like corn right. 300 years ago. Exactly. What we know as chicken was a wild animal that they domesticated and, and crossbred to have a, a high yield food product, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. So what we know, you know, our entire food sources now, it was not what they ate then. Well, not to that, mention regional differences in, you know, cold temperatures and jungles and, you know, arid, te you know, environments, mm -hmm. vastly different food food diets. Well, on that, so if, if I go to the store and I buy organic, am I getting really, am I getting organic food guaranteed? Well, it, it says organic on the label and the government has some loose certifications involved mm -hmm. in that. What people don't realize is you can have an organic field next to a non-organic field and they mm -hmm. spray their pesticides and you have cross-contamination. Mm -hmm. This is still labeled as organic. And I think, you know, people's biggest fear is organic is health and safety. When you're looking at a food um, that doesn't store a toxin, like let's say a, a lean protein source, Lots of that, you know, the pesticides, and, and I even hate to use the word toxin, that's so overused, but that gets stored in the fat of the animals. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to eat a substantial quantity of, let's say, red meat or beef, fatty beef, it's probably better to get a grass-fed organic type of source if it's a predominant source in your diet. Well, some of these things, these, these like the hormones or non-hormone, a lot of these things aren't orally bioavailable well, anyway. Well, I love the hormone argument, yeah. you know, the growth hormones. Growth hormone is a peptide. Even if it is in the animal that you're buying, which is negligible at that point, your body's not going to absorb an intact peptide-based hormone. It's going to hydrolyze in the stomach yeah. acid. If it was, the supplement industry would be on that. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, they'd be selling beef, you know, <laughs> hormone-based beef protein and, exactly. and making a killing. So I, I think there's a lot of 
irrational fear. Uh, people talk about the health of organic versus non-organic. The fact of the matter is that the, the food exists to not provide us with nutrients. The food exists to provide itself with nutrients for the proliferation of that species. So if you have a tomato that comes to full you know, growth and ripening of a tomato, that means every nutrient that that tomato needs to reach that mature state is in the tomato, whether it's organic or not. Its goal is not to transfer those nutrients mm -hmm. to you. It's, its goal is to exist with those nutrients. So if you have something that, you know, a non-organic fruit or vegetable or, or animal or what have you, it's still a nutritious source. One thing that kills me is when people, um, you know, they, they, they shy away from non-organic food, but if you don't have the indispensable income to pay three or four or five times more, let's say for something like berries, if you can't afford organic berries, it's much better to just eat berries mm -hmm. than to eat zero berries because they have so many health benefits besides the negligible context of organic. And then, um, you know, things like bananas. You don't need a banana peel. You don't need organic bananas because anything that might be on the banana is not inside exactly. the banana. Um, if you're getting, you know, going back to the berries or other produce, if you're getting frozen produce from a, from a you know, a major food distribution company, they wash that before mm -hmm. it goes in the bag and freezes. They're not going to give you an unwashed, unprepared, non-pleasant looking food. So they're going to spray them off. And there's very, and people don't realize there's very strict regulations with those. If you've oh, yeah. ever just tried to produce supplements, I mean, even, even just nutritional supplements, which are infinitely more loosely the, regulated. The good manufacturing than practices, I mean, the book is, yeah. it's out of this oh, world. You have, yeah, you have to have your air recirculated so many minutes, you know, you have to have, you know, clean rooms. Temperature the, control. Yeah, yeah. The, flo the, the no, uh, where, where, where all particles fall through the floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, that people don't realize so, all those things. So the, the fact that, yeah, do you want to go to a non-organic field and completely subsist off of freshly sprayed, pesticide-ridden produce and eat, uh, you know, an overabundance of, let's say, farm-raised fatty beef, you know, with a lot of inflammatory omega-6 fatty acids? Probably not in quantity, but again, it's if you eat, a little bit of here and a little bit of here and have a lot of variety, there's a good chance that you're not only getting plenty of nutrients, but you're also avoiding any number of excess compounds by having variety in your when diet. Well, it's almost, I mean, you can be, I mean, you have to put things in perspective. At the end of the day, if you're eating something that, you know, I always say, if you can't pick it, kill it, or grow it, you shouldn't be eating it. If you're eating these, you know, non-organic fruits and you're eating a, a farm-raised, uh, you know, cor a corn-fed beef, Instead of eating pop tarts and drinking that's Coke. still better exactly. When one thing that that you see too with you know with a lot of the fads um, is things like the you know you mentioned pop tarts. People buy organic pop tarts or organic snack foods. They don't understand that the processing of those foods by default removes any sort of mm -hmm. you know covering topical layer of that product. Yes. So like organic wheat, you know refined wheat based products, nothing nothing ends up in the refined product anyway. So if you're buying organic kids cereal. Mm -hmm. It's probably not as important yeah, by the, by as, time it's, as buying an organic yeah, by the time it's labeled cereal. Yeah, labeled cereal. There's yeah, oh. there's nothing left in it anyways, yeah. but the but the raw ingredients. So. Yeah.